broken credit card. This is all Hamida Smilian has of his wife and nine-year-old daughter's belongings retrieved from the debris of flight PS752. He spent the past two years searching for answers and countless hours sharing his testimony, evidence and messages with RCMP, including tips from people who said they were insiders in Iran. I was in military service right near the scene. But he says the RCMP didn't speak to informants outside Canada, so he traveled to Ukraine himself, where he says officials told him the RCMP still hadn't shared his testimony with Ukrainian investigators. I have had several, as I said, several meetings with RCMP and all of them were recorded. So they should have been uh, passed to Ukraine, but they were not. The RCMP's commissioner, Brenda Lucky, conceded to families the pace is slow. In a letter obtained by CBC News, she wrote all information has to be analyzed and assessed for risk before it can be shared with Ukraine's criminal investigation. The international aspect of this, uh, this particular case uh, makes this a very complicated case uh, for the RCMP to manage, which ostensibly could take uh, uh, quite a few years. Complicating the case further, some of the victims' families have reported threats and harassment coming from Iran. CSIS says it may constitute foreign interference. You need to potentially juxtapose the evidence collected with uh, potential national security uh, investigations. Victims' families have long called for Ukrainian investigators to come here to Canada to speak to them directly. The RCMP's commissioner this summer promised to help make that happen. But Ukraine's prosecutor general's office says the pandemic got in the way and now it's waiting to hear from Canada. Ashley Burke, CBC News, Ottawa.